Isaiah chapters 39, 40, 41 and 42. Soon after this, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift. He had heard that Hezekiah had been sick and that he had recovered. Hezekiah was delighted with the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices and the aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasuries. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked him, What did those men want? Where were they from? Hezekiah replied, They came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? asked Isaiah. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I own, all my royal treasuries. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to this message from the Lord of Heaven's armies. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, This message you have given me from the Lord is good, for the king was thinking, At least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight way through the wasteland for our God. Fill the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. A voice said, Shout! I asked, What should I shout? Shout! That people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with people. The grass withers and flowers fade. But the word of our God stands forever. O Zion! Messenger of good news, shout from the mountain tops, shout it louder, O Jerusalem, shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep. With their young. Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Who has measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? Who is able to advise the Spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? Did someone teach him what is right? Or show him the path of justice? No, for all the nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket. They are nothing more than dust on the scales. He picks up the whole earth, and though it were a grain of sand, all the wood in Lebanon's forest and all Lebanon's animals would not be enough to make a burnt offering worthy of our God. The nations of the world are worth nothing to him. In his eyes, they count for less than nothing, mere emptiness and froth. To whom can you compare God? What image can you find to resemble him? Can he be compared to an idol formed in a mold, overlaid with gold and decorated with silver chains? Or if people are too poor for that, they might at least choose wood that would own decay and a skilled craftsman to carve an image that won't fall down. Haven't you heard? Don't you understand? Are you deaf to the words of God, the words he gave before the world began? Are you so ignorant? God sits above the circle of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world 
and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root when he blows on them and they wither. The wind carries them off like shaft. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Ask the Holy One. Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. O Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Listen in silence before me, you lands beyond the sea. Bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case. Who has stirred up this king from the east, rightly calling him to God's service? Who gives this man victory over many nations and permits him to trample their kings underfoot? With his sword, he reduces armies to dust. With his bow, he scatters them like shaft before the wind. He chases them away and goes on safely, though he is walking over unfamiliar ground. Who has done such mighty deeds, summoning each new generation from the beginning of time? Is it I, the Lord, the first and the last? I alone am He. The lands beyond the sea watch in fear. Remote lands tremble and mobilize for war. The idol makers encourage one another, saying to each other, Be strong. The, the carver encourages the goldsmith, and the molder helps at the anvil. Good, they say, it's coming along fine. Carefully they join the parts together, then fasten the thing in place so it won't fall over. But as for you, Israel my servant, Jacob my chosen one, descended from Abraham my friend, I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, You are my servant, for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. See, all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who try to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing. For I hold you by your right hand, I, the Lord your God. And I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Though you are a lowly worm, a, O Jacob, don't be afraid, people of Israel, for I will help you. I am the Lord your Redeemer. I am the Holy One of Israel. You will be a new threshing instrument with many sharp teeth. You will tear your enemies apart, making shaft of mountains. You will toss them into the air and the wind will blow them all away. A whirlwind will scatter them. Then you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy search for water and there is none and their tongues are parched from thirst, then I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will never abandon them. I will open up rivers for them on the high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the desert with pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the parched ground. I will plant trees in the barren desert, cedar, acacia, myrtle, olive, cypress, fir and pine. I am doing this so all who see this miracle will understand what it means. That it is the Lord who has done this, the Holy One of Israel who created it. Present the case for your idols, says the Lord. Let them show what they can do, says the King of Israel. 
let them try to tell us what happened long ago so that we may consider the evidence or let them tell us what the future holds so we can know what's going to happen yes tell us what will occur in the days ahead then we will do you are gods in fact do anything good or bad do something that will amaze and frighten us but no you are less than nothing and can do nothing at all those who choose you pollute themselves but i have stirred up a leader who will approach from the north from the east he will call on my name i will give him victory over kings and princes he will trample them as a potter treads on clay who told you from the beginning that this would happen who predicted this making you admit that he was right no one said a word i was the first to tell zion look help is on the way i will send jerusalem a messenger with good news not one of your idols told you this not one gave any answer when i asked see they are all foolish worthless things all your idols are as empty as the wind look at my servant whom i strengthen he is my chosen one he pleases me i have put my spirit upon him he will bring justice to the nations he will not shout or raise his voice in public he will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle he will bring justice to all who have been wronged he will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instruction god the lord created the heavens and stretched them out he created the earth and everything in it he gives bread to everyone life to everyone who walks the earth and it is he who says i the lord have called you to demonstrate my righteousness i will take you by the hand and guard you and i will give you to my people israel as a symbol of my covenant with them and you will be a light to guide the nations you will open the eyes of the blind you will free the captives from prison releasing those who sit in dark dungeons i am the lord that is my name i will not give my glory to anyone else nor share my praise with carved idols everything i prophesied has come true and now i will prophesy again i will tell you the future before it happens sing a new song to the lord sing his praises from the ends of the earth sing all you who sail the seas all you who live in distant coastlands join in the chorus you desert towns let the villages of kedar rejoice let the people of sela sing for joy shout praises from the mountain tops let the whole world glorify the lord let it sing his praise the lord will march forth like a mighty hero he will come out like a warrior full of fury he will shout his battle cry and crush all his enemies he will say i have long been silent yes i have restrained myself but now like a woman in labor i will cry and groan and pant i will level the mountains and hills and blight all their greenery i will turn the rivers into dry land and will dry up all the pools i will lead blind israel down a new path guiding them along an unfamiliar way i will brighten the darkness before them and smooth out the road ahead of them yes i will indeed do these things i will not forsake them but those who trust in idols who say you are our gods will be turned away in shame listen you who are deaf look and see you blind who is as blind as my people my servant who is as deaf as my messenger who is as blind as my chosen people the servant of the lord you see and recognize what is right but refuse to act on it you hear with your ears but you don't really listen because he is righteous the lord has exalted his glorious law but his own people have been robbed and plundered enslaved imprisoned and trapped they are fair game for anyone and have no one to protect them no one to take them back home who will hear these lessons from the past and see the ruin that awaits you in the future who allowed israel to be robbed and hurt it was the lord 
against whom we sinned for the people would not walk in his path nor would they obey his law therefore he poured out his fury on them and destroyed them in battle they were en- enveloped in flames but they still refused to understand they were consumed by fire but they did not learn their lesson